What's good YouTube, it's your boy Keon, and I'm coming through with yet another review. Behind me, I have the 2024 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 Coupe. Now, for the 2024 model year, this model starts at 54,700. Now, the vehicle behind me with all its options is priced at 62,000. Those options include the AMG package, the multimedia package, as well as the driver assist package, and also this specific color, the Cardinal Red, is an option as well. All right, let's get to the review. All right, so we're gonna start off with the exterior with this grill. Now, this grill does come with the AMG package. As you can see, it's way more aggressive than the standard grill. It's more open, it's uh, chromed out, and it's blackened. You have this camera here, that's part of the 360 view. The LED headlights and also your daytime running lights. You have your 20 inch, 20 spoke gloss black AMG wheels with also the brakes. You see there are drilled, huge brakes, huge wheels. And then you get the 285s in the back and the 255s in the front. They're wrapped in Continental. I love this color, it's called, it's called Cardinal Red. As you can see, you got the GLC 300, for Matic, so it's all-wheel drive. Uh, fake exhaust tips down here. The actual exhaust is underneath. Um, behind this Mercedes-Benz emblem, you have your reverse camera. So when you put it in reverse, it pops out, pops back in. Also after making this video, I found out if you press on that emblem, you, it also opens the back hatch. You have fate vents here for sporty fill. Cameras here on the side for the 360 view. Got cameras up here, but that's for the adaptive cruise control. That comes with the driver assist package. Love that color. So what we got under the hood is a two liter turbo four cylinder engine. Also a 48 volt hybrid system as well, producing 255 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. So for all you EcoBoost Mustang drivers and four cylinder Camaro drivers thinking you can beat this off the line, think twice because it's not what you think. This truck can go from zero to 60 in 6.2 seconds. Also, I want to add that this engine is made it to a nine-speed transmission as well. All right, so here's the key. Of course, you have your Mercedes symbol, which access the lock button, then the unlock button, and then for the trunk. Right here, the button right here. You have to panic back here. Um, and then, of course, your key for when you get locked out or the battery dies. You can still be able to get in. So you hit the unlock, you see the mirrors fold out and the light flash. It is all black inside, all black leather. Starting off, you have your 12.3 digital gauge cluster. You have your AMG sport steering wheel, like I mentioned earlier with the AMG package. This comes with the perforated leather. It's black, piano black finish, and your aluminum finish here. Your bottom left, you can control your adaptive cruise control settings, your distance, turn it on and off, and your speed settings. And then on the right top, you can control your infotainment system, your infotainment screen here. And on the bottom, your phone settings, your volume, it's all, it's all buttons and touch as well, touch sensitive. Your right stock here is your, your gear selector as on all Mercedes. So all the way up is reverse, all the way down is drive, one up is neutral, and you push this button here for park. And then on your left. I'm sorry, can you say that again, please? And then on your left, you control your windshield wipers, of course. Okay, over to your left of the steering wheel, you have the, uh, the electronic control that adjusts the steering wheel, the little joystick. You have your lights control here. 
keep them in automatic fault lights. Your electronic parking brake, you push to engage, you pull to disengage. And then on the door, you have your seat controls. You can adjust the headrest on um, the back of the seat, the seat height and distance from the steering wheel, your three memory settings, and also heated, heated controls. Then of course you have your window settings, your lock settings for the window. And then with this touchpad, you can bring the mirror in and out. You can also control the mirror position as well. Lock and unlock, pull handle, door handle. You see you have, also you have the ambient lighting going around the door as well as in the back. I can't believe I forgot to mention the ambient lighting. Mercedes-Benz kills it with the ambient lighting. You have 64 colors to choose for. And the best part is you don't have to option it. It comes standard with this model. I like this. Um, I like the door, the door grab, the door grab area. At a certain angle, it looks like it's floating, of course. It's, it's connected to the door on the side, but if you look at it at a certain angle, it looks like it's floating, which makes it look premium. And then you have a button down here to open the back hatch and they have more store space. Your AC vents. I like the, I like the new ones, but I like the old ones more. The old ones have a more jet turbine look, but these are cool because it's like it's floating. Of course you have your engine start stop button. And then on the bottom here, you have your option to turn off automatic stop start during traffic. Here you have a 11.9 inch infotainment screen with Android, wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And just like on the steering wheel, you have your, uh, your touch sensitive buttons and you can control the different, different modes of the car. Right now I'm an individual where you can control the different settings and then sport, comfort, eco, and then off-road, put it back in sport. And then as you can see here at the bottom, you still have your uh, AC controls where you control the touchscreen. So all the AC controls are on the touchscreen or on the screen. Here's your vehicle settings button. You tap that and you can access all the vehicle settings such as all your safety settings. And it has, since it has the um, packaging, all your assist, driving modes, all the interior lighting, ambient lighting, your different system controls. You can get info and you name it. Everything is here. And of course you have your hazards, your fingerprint reader, your power button for the screen, and then your touchpad for the audio. As far as the audio goes, it sounds pretty good as far as like you hearing the voice clearly or some of the sounds, but it's lacking in bass. Um, the bass is, the bass is, is, is subpar, it's not, it's not there. So if I was to get this vehicle, I will upgrade the sound, I will upgrade the sound system to the, the Burmeister and you get two subwoofers in the back. All right, continue on to the cup holder. You have your wireless charging here. You have a USB type C port here. You have your two cup holders, a uh, place to put your key. And as you can see, there's ambient lighting all inside. You have more storage space. You have place to hold change or cigarettes or whatever you want to put there. You have two more USB type C ports and you have, I have no idea what that is, but it's there and it's lit up. Well, it might be a port for where the light, yeah, the light come through. All right, you have your black leather up here, your hard plastic. Um, I don't know what this material is, but it feels cheap. It looks nice. And then you have more ambient lighting coming through on the top of the screen. So yeah, with the GLC, it's still an entry level vehicle for Mercedes. So everything is not gonna feel, feel premium. It looks premium, but it's not gonna feel premium because example, you have your hard plastics here and this is not real metal. It just looks metal. This is not real metal. You have more 
pleather here. <laughs> it feels like leather. It's hard plastic here. So yeah, if you really want ultimate luxury, you're gonna have to get the GLE or uh, GLS models. I like the rear view mirror here. It almost looks bezel this. Then of course you have your moon roof. You don't get a solid sunshade with the moon roof, but this is cool as well. So you only get partial, so some light is still gonna come in. Um, there's ambient lighting up here as well. All your controls for the sunroof is here. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, you get the AMG sport seats. Um, they're leather, but like I said, with this model, it's still an entry level Mercedes, so it's not like Napa leather or anything. It's still kind of, it's not like as soft as you would. It's not as soft as you would um, with the top level uh, Mercedes Benz truck, but it still um, looks nice. It's bolstered up. It feels cheap. <laughs> it creaks when you're driving. So that's another thing. And as you can see in the back, why they call it a coupe? Because the roof line kind of slumps. You barely can see out this small window and you have a big blind spot here and one back there. So yeah, so it's almost like a giant car. So going to the back seat, you see the same thing follow here on the rear door here, that floating look for the door grab, uh, door handle, of course, your interior lighting, got a speaker in the door, a cup holder, um, the same leather material back here. Um, you get a document holder here on the back seat um carpeted a uh, little storage area i guess with some pens or something like that you got rear ac vents you got you have dual ac vents there are no uh plugs back here or usb um plug usb sockets back here you pull this down to reveal the cup holders you press on that And then you reveal your cup holders back here. All right, so I am 6'2", and as you can see that I have just enough head space and leg room. Um, so I feel comfortable back here, even though with the sloping roof line, but let me sit up straight, <laughs> but barely. And yeah. I, I, I would be okay on a road trip. Uh, I just hate that the seats don't recline just a little bit. Just a little bit. But yeah. And here is some more adjustability for the headrest for the front seats. You can move it forward or backwards. Now with the GLC Coupe, you only get 18 cubic feet of storage because of the sloping roof line. You do get around 22 with the SUV. With the seats down, you do get 52.6. So yeah, that's 52.6. When you press this button to let the seats down, the front seats do move up. Um, but yeah, you have storage here. Spare tire here with all your tools. Um, yeah, the tow hook. Chrome finish. And that is about it. You hit this button to close and lock it, and you hit this button just to close or stop. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for the first part of this review. Now we're about to take it on a POV drive to see how she drives. We're going to start with a little 0 to 60. Sixty right there. All right. No slouch. 
poor Delhi driver. Like this is pretty much all you need for a Delhi driver. Yeah, it's just enough power and torque to um, get you through traffic. Uh, brakes are really good. Little AMG brakes. Yeah. The steering wheel feels pretty good. Feels good in your hands. It's a decent size. I like the leather. Um, it's smooth. Um, yeah. All right. That was Like I was saying earlier, EcoBoost Mustangs, you gotta run for your money with this truck. Especially off the line with the formatic and the torque that it has. And it's pretty light too, it's like 3,900 pounds. You're getting on the highway here. That's no problem getting up the highway speeds. Since we're on the highway, it's a good time to uh, test the adaptive cruise control. So what I'm doing is turn it on here. All right, we set it to 75. Let's do this thing, and it's completely hands-free. Just keep your hands on the steering wheel, or it'll give you an alert every time, but it'll keep you in the lane. Um, it'll slow down if another vehicle is um, approaching. If you need to switch lanes, all you need to do is turn your turn signal on into that direction and it will switch lanes for you. Or it will uh, suggest switching lanes itself and get over. It's like right now. It turned on the turning signal and it's getting over by itself. I didn't even, I didn't touch anything. And then it turns off by itself. Yep, see, suggesting again. Oh, okay. What? Okay. Now nah, I, I get it. So if you're currently in a lane, like for instance, I'm in the second to last left lane. Um, if there's a car going slower than you, it will move over and then move you back in that lane. So, okay, I get it. Yeah. I was confused because at first I, I was clear. Let me turn this off. I was clear in this lane and it moved me back over. So, okay, I get it now. But this is cool. It's com like I said, it's completely hands-free. Um, well, not completely, because you still have to put your hands on the steering wheel every every now and then, or you keep your hands here. But you really don't have to drive it; literally drive itself. All right, so I'm gonna uh, turn on my right turning signal, and it's gonna make sure the coast is clear in that lane, and then move over. And I just have to turn the uh, turn signal off. Now I wonder if it's gonna get off on the exit for me. Let me see it slowing down. No. Nah, 
I was like, we'll get off of it. I still gotta do that myself, but that's cool. Just trying it out. And then I'm going to cancel. The GLE 63S. That one has over 600 horsepower. Wow. Big brakes. It's a nice Carrera up front. That is trunk open. Oh, that's the. Is that the wing? No, no, no. That's. What just open? Okay, it still feel wallopy though, but it handles okay. Now with the blind spot um, alert. So if there's somebody in your blind spot and you have it on a turning signal towards that way, it's gonna uh, beep to let you know that somebody's there. But uh, if you don't have your turn, if you're not anticipating on turning, it's just gonna uh, flat, this is gonna light up red. But I'm gonna turn the adaptive cruise control back on. Hit resume. And it's gonna take over. I just gotta keep touching the steering wheel, keep my hand on the steering wheel every now and then. But like I was saying earlier, this is a pretty smooth vehicle. And if you're in the market for a luxury vehicle, but you don't wanna spend a whole lot of money, a ton of money on like a GLE or a GLS, this is the perfect uh, candidate. I would, if you want more speed, you can get the AMG model, like the uh, AMG um, GLC 53 or the 63. I don't know if the 63 out, but I know the 53 is. Um, they have that. That one has a, a twin turbo V6. So now I'm suggesting this is going over to another lane on its own. That's pretty cool. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I was I would suggest this um, this vehicle. Let's get back over. Um, it's pretty cool. The only negatives I say about this vehicle is, well, I don't I don't personally like the the four cylinder, but you know whatever. So that's one, and then uh, some areas is cheap. This vehicle is sixty thousand dollars. You know, and it's a Mercedes, so kind of expected a little better leather and stuff like that. Like this leather, leather seats are like hard and stuff like that. Um, the plastics everywhere. Everything looks nice, but it's some, some, some certain stuff it just feels cheap. Um, what else? Um, it's squeaking inside, and this is a new vehicle, so I don't, I don't understand that. So. This is a, uh, a new, oh, I gonna cut me off. This is a new vehicle and it's already rattling and, and squeaking, so. What else? That's, um, that's pretty much it. I like, I like the screen, I like the way it feels. Uh, it moves for what it is and what type of engine it has. 
Um, oh, I don't like that the, the sunroof doesn't go all the way back. So I want the whole uh, panoramic roof. I mean, the moonroof is cool. It's, it's big enough, but I want to go all the way back. I want the full roof to be the full roof to be um, exposed. But other than that, it's pretty good for what it is. So, yeah. But all right, guys, this is gonna be it for this this review on this 2024 GLC 300 Coupe. If you're new to the channel. Uh, make sure you subscribe, also like the video, and comment down below and tell what you think um, of this review. Um, I definitely hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something, um, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.